Um, been a couple weeks. Uh, hope you guys have all forgot about Virginia Tech and moved on. Um, but, you know, probably, you know, just to hit on it quickly, because like I normally do, you know, probably one of our better performances of the year, you know, where all three phases you felt like clicked a little bit. And um, I still think we haven't played our best game of the year. Uh, so that's a good thing. I think we still have more. Uh, I think our kids understand after watching the tape with, that we have more. I think our attitude, our effort, outstanding. You know, you love how our guys fight. Um, you know, there's always adversity in the game of football. We've, you know, we've, we've made it to the point where we're going to create more adversity and make it harder on ourselves. Um, and um, so um, it's good. And again, just getting prepared. You know, last week went on the road recruiting a little bit. Um, prepared for Louisville at the same time as you're on the road. And, um, you know, coordinators and, and myself had, you know, extra days in the office just to focus on football and, and uh, really just kind of getting things together. So when the coaches came off the road, we were ahead on Louisville. Um, obviously, Scott Satterfield does a great job. Uh, I believe he calls most of the offense, so he's been doing it for a while. Um, so we've gone back and watched a lot of the 2020 game here during COVID when nobody else really saw that game uh, except on TV. Um, and, um, you know, they're, they're really athletic. Obviously, offensively, it starts with Malik Cunningham. Um, you know, just, a, you know, it, it's him. I mean, he's, he's uh, kind of like the Sims guy from Georgia Tech. He's athletic. He can run. He can throw. Um, we've got to stop the run, you know, uh, whether he's handing it off or he's running it himself. He's the key to the offense for sure. And, uh, you know, they got good backs. Uh, Tyrone Evans. Uh, they got a Hudson at wide out number zero who's your go-to guy. I think he's got 29 catches. Then defensively, um, again, really athletic. They can run. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you know they, they run a 3-4 uh, a lot of times. So we'll see a lot of 3-4 uh, front this week. And um, it'll, be a, it'll be a great challenge for us on the road, 8 o'clock. I think we're the 8 p.m. darling team uh, on the road. Um, because I think we got North Carolina at 8 p.m. too, so I guess we're the only ones fit to run, you know, run a game. I guess at 8 p.m. will be our third one of the year next week, um, uh, and again, it'll be two in a row uh, at 8 p.m. Um, so, um, you know, we're ready to roll. Questions? Aside from recruiting you guys did and preparing for Louisville, how much self scouting did you? A lot. And, and what did you What did you find from all that self scouting? Not telling you. I didn't think you would, but I thought I'd ask Yeah, I mean, self-scout, put it this way, Jay, we, you know, like self-scout is huge. We, t we try to self-scout every week whether you can change things. I think on open weeks, you know, we've been pretty good at going back and saying, okay, what are we doing? What's it look like? What do you, you know, you know what are they looking at? Um, but, you know, defensively, I can show you, you know, we, we do it every week. Um, you know, offensively and defensively, you know, you get deeper into it in, in an open week because you can, um, you know, um, Got a tip from an old coach one time. Said, you know, you, you build tendencies and you break them in big games. You know, and I think after six games, it's it's time maybe to break some tendencies, uh, whatever they are. And again, you know, tendency to run the football. You know, we're not going to break that tendency if we're good at it. I think all good teams have tendencies, and it's like go ahead, you know, stop it. You know, uh, that's the only way. You know, you're really going to break a tendency uh, as far as what you do. And again, but we look at self scout every week. It's it's a priority to know what we do, when are we doing it, you know, what's our run pass on first down, second down, what's it, what is, you know, our run pass after, you know, on second down after an incomplete pass. I mean, we look at everything. You'd, you'd be like, I cannot believe you look at this, um, but we do. We look at a ton of stuff. How much can you, out, sorry, what did you find out about the passing? I'm not going to tell you. How Jay. much can you do in a week in terms of doing new things, putting in new things, though, when you're, at, you know, midway through the season, you have a week off? I mean, you can put new things in. Um, you know, you can put new things in. in, in but, you know, it's not going to be it's, – it's tweaking stuff, Chris, more than it is, you know, throwing this new concept in, that, you know, the guys. I mean, it's, I mean, to me, offensively, defensively, you know, even special teams-wise, you throw in what you're going to do in spring ball, fall camp, and then you refer back to it or you tweak it a little bit. You know, we're not going to come out and run the triple option this week. Uh, you just you know you don't put something drastic in that the kids have no idea that they haven't gone through to see how it holds up against a a stout defense. I mean, putting in new stuff and running against a scout team, saying boy it looks great today, you know you're probably in trouble. How would you uh, assess Keaton's play at the halfway point? You know what? Um, I mean, it's a great question. Um, I'd say it's it's maybe above average. I wouldn't say it's a winning effort every time. I'd say it's above average right now. Um, and uh, and I think it can be better. And um, and again, he thinks it can be better as well. I believe. 
Um, and again, it's you know sometimes it comes down to maybe overcoaching stuff, Amanda. I mean, sometimes we're you know I, put it this way: I think he's a pleaser. And I think he's trying to do everything exactly the right way. And sometimes I think you can overthink things. So I think we just got to kind of let it let it go and and maybe don't overcoach him as much and let let him play football and let him do what he does. You know, versus this coverage, this this. There's so many things as a quarterback. Sometimes you can clutter his mind with useless details instead of just saying, "Hey, let him go play ball." And uh, maybe we can do a better job as a, as a staff. And he can do a better job at seeing stuff and. Um, so I think you know it's 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 always twofold. You know we got to do a better job as coaches first. And, you know and they're doing so much, doing maybe too much to the point where we we got to keep it simpler too. Obviously Frank's going to break down the offense during the off week. Randy's going to sit down with the defense. What, what's your focus as the head coach? I do both. I do both. I, you know I'm going to I'm going to do both. I'm going to be actually I'm not going to put in schemes on offense. I'm going to be with the defense and and uh, make sure that, um, you know, how it's broken down, what it looks like, you know, hey, this is what we'd like to, you know, do. So I'm going to help more on defense because I can. And my, my, my role, I feel like, on offense, to be honest with you, is I'm the self-scout. I'm the self-scout GA. I'm the self-scout. I'm looking at what we do every week. I'm trying to give them information to what I see as a defense coach, what they're doing and what we could do better. That kind of and I've always done that, whether they listen or not. You mentioned a comparison to Jeff Sims. Are there a lot of design runs for Cunningham? What's unique about the challenge with him? Um, there are some design runs. They'll run some, you know, zone read, where you know the tight end's hook in the end, and the tailback is going to wrap around and try to get up on your safety or your support player, and it is a it's a design keeper, um, which is a tough play to defend. Um, you know, we worked on it last week, obviously in practice, and we practiced twice last week um, on on some of that stuff, um, but. But it's really, you know, I mean, the, the quarterback keepers at least were expecting run. It's when he drops back and he's got threats out there at the receiver spot and the tight end spot. And then, you know, you're in coverage and all of a sudden he takes off running. That's what really squares, scares you. And again, they got, you know, designed quarterback draws as well. Um, so, you know, there's a the design quarterback keepers off the edge on his own read. There's the, the draws or what you're, you know, that you really have to focus on this week. And we've really done a good job versus the draw. So I think if they're watching tape, they're going, man, the D-Tackles do a great job at, you know, shedding, getting off blocks. We've done a nice job there. But, you know, we always are trying to look at, you know, what is the weakness? What are we showing on tape that we have to, you know, that, you know, what we have to be ready for? But uh, we haven't shown a really a, a ton of weakness. It's, you know, we showed a weakness, you know, with Jeff Sims when he dropped back to throw and we lost contain for whatever reason and he's going, he's running. That's where we've gotten hurt. We take bad angles. We got to take good angles this week. The guy, if, if, if Malik takes off, you know, out of the pocket, we have to take good angles and expect where he's gonna go, where he's gonna be, not where he is. As he starts to kind of pick up steam and put up these big numbers, how much of uh, how much responsibility for keeping up that kind of production falls on him, kind of adjusting to what defense is showing what's new and giving him extra attention versus what the coach is going to do to scheme him up. Yeah, it's a it's a hard question to answer. Um, it's everybody. I mean, Izzy just run. Okay, we'll tell Izzy what to do, where to go. Hey, we like this, and you know, I, as I say, coaches will coach, the players will play, and you know, we're going to do a good job. Of, you know, of getting Izzy in position where he can be successful. And that's what we've done. I mean, he hits the hole fast. Uh, we don't want Izzy thinking, um, but that's that's a coach's job to put him in position to be successful, and our offense has done that, and uh, we've we've done an outstanding job running the football. Period. And. Uh, we'll continue to do that. Um, well, you, you know, you look at it and everybody will talk, how's Keaton doing? And, you know, it's like, um, you know, to talk about a run game and, and Izzy's performance last week would be, you know, uh, bad on my part. Not talk about how successful he's been, how well the offensive line's blocked and the fullbacks and whatever, tight ends. Um, but, you know, everybody wants both, right? Last year, we don't have any run game. You guys talking about the run game. This week, this year, we're running the ball better than we're throwing it. Like, we'd like him to be two-dimensional. We'd like to be great at everything, okay? But I know you guys aren't great at everything. Neither am I. But right now, we got a run game going. And I'm just, you know, I love the run game. The clock is ticking. And if you can run it, you know, that's, I'll, I'll take that any day. Um, that's what our guys are doing. So it's a, it's a good thing. You guys, you know, doom and gloom. Like, what, you know, why can't we throw for 400 yards every weekend? Like, I would rather rush for 400. Against Virginia Tech, Izzy had a couple of nice blitz pickups and gave Keaton all kinds of time to throw. What can you say? How did you notice that? I it's did. good, Amanda. Um, uh, what can you say about how far he's coming in pass protection? 
he's gotten better, you know, but it's a week by week thing too. I think he had a really good week last week. You know, and again, that's what we talk about consistency is he's got to do it every week, you know, um, you know, and he's been good in some weeks and some weeks he has not been in, you know, different blitzes, different shows, different disguises by the defense. Um, you know, he had you know great focus last week and, and it stepped up and did some good things. And against Virginia Tech, Shane and Tyler were your two leading tacklers. Speak to how they've really adapted and fit into what you're doing defensively. You know, Tyler's been good for a couple weeks, as we talked uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, uh, going into the Virginia Tech game. And then, you know, Shane Simon did a great job. And he practiced better. You know, I got text messages like, hey, Tuesday, great job. That's how we want you to fit it. Shane is such a – he's a pleaser like Keaton. He's one of those guys who wants to do everything the right way. Sometimes you just got to go hit someone in the mouth, you know. Uh, as a linebacker, and uh, he's just so worried about doing everything exactly right. Sometimes you just got to go play football, and, and Shane, you know, ca has kind of fallen into that, being the new guy and wanting to, you know, just be a pleaser um, to the point where last week in practice, it was like, you know, Shane start turning it loose, and he turned it loose and made some nice plays, and um, and then did a, you know, an unbelievable job at coming in and playing Mike linebacker, which at halftime when we heard number seven was out, I was like, oh boy, this is going to be interesting because Shane has not had a ton of snaps at Mike. And uh, he did an outstanding job of coming in and filling that role because I didn't know what we'd get. It could have been a, you know, it could have been a bad second half, but, um, you know, I, I, Shane Simon did a heck of a job in there mentally, more than just the physical part. Like enough that it's something you would look at going forward and maybe get Sarasi a chances outside? Sort of move around like that. Even in our staff meetings, you may see you may see him on the outside. You never know, Chris. Yeah, he likes it out there too. You know, if you ask him, he's like, "Oh, that guy gets to make a lot of plays out there." So, might be something you see. What do your spies tell you about Malik coming in injured? I don't have any spies. You guys are my spies, so maybe you can go, guys could do some digging. Um, you know, I think it's you know, I think he's in the concussion protocol like a lot of quarterbacks around the country, and I'm sure they'll be careful with him. I'm sure he'll be careful with himself. Um, you know, he's got a career at the next level, and and uh, but it's been, you know, it's been one, two. I mean, this will be he's got three three weeks. I think Malik will be ready to go. I'm sure he's, um, I'm sure he'll be ready to go. If that's what it is. And I'm not the trainer. I'm not the doctor. I'm just the coach, knowing that we're probably going to see Mr. Cunningham. You got it. We are, and we are. We got some guys getting healthier. Speaking of injuries, um, we got one bad news, um, you know, from a guy that has tried for the last really three weeks to uh, to to bounce back and, and play. This guy wants to play bad, and I really feel bad. We've done everything in our power as trainers and doctors to try to get him get him as close as he could and try to get him back on the field uh, to play. Um, um, and again, his future is important as well. But Carter Warren will be out for the rest of the year, speaking of injuries. So they'll give you some bad news, Jerry. Look at him. He loves he's like, da, 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 typing it up. Um, but he, again, Carter Warren, I mean, I, you know, I can't thank him enough for all the efforts he's made. It's sad to think that he's played, played his last ball game, you know, in that pit, you know, pit uniform. Uh, don't even want to think about it. He didn't want to think about it. That's why he's tried so hard. He's like, he has tried to rehab it, tried to get back. It doesn't feel good enough, and we need to get him prepared for the next, his next journey um, in the NFL. Uh, it's only fair for him uh, to be able to do that. So uh, disappointed to hear that. But like I said, he's, you know, it, it's it's been painful for him to even, you know, make that decision. It was, you know, it's like Carter, you got to make, you know, we got to make a decision here soon. You can't just keep week by week. We need to go, you know, um, you know, get yourself better. So with Carter out, who are the guys? I know Branson played quite a bit of snaps at left. Will it be him taking over at left tackle? It'll be him, but it'll be a three-man race right now. I mean, you, you got him, you got Gabe Hoy, who's back, and, and, and Gonsalves. That, you know, those are your three guys, the three-man rotation. And, and Bear's got to be ready to go. He's one play away. Uh, we'd like to redshirt him. Uh, we think he's going to be really good. He's going to be a lot better next year than he is this year. But Ryan Bear is another guy that... Um, that you know is getting reps every day, you know, with the ones and the twos, just to to get him prepared because you never know when you're, you know, you're one step away from him being a guy that's playing significant football for you. We talked about Malik Cunningham with a guy like with a guy like him and his ability to run it and throw it. Are you noticing more of those kind of guys oh. popping up across like that? They're like more 50-50 with running and throwing. Hey, what you know? You take you know you take the ACC and compare it to some other conferences in the country. I mean, the quarterbacks we're seeing. I mean, the Wells kid last week could run. I mean, every week it's somebody that can really beat you. You know, beat you with their feet. Every week it's another guy. Um, and again, you know, 
not, not to look ahead, but you know, just watching the guy for next week, May can run. I mean, these all these guys can run and and, and beat you with their arm and the feet. So it's. It's what the ACC is right now. Uh, you know, watch the Duke game, you know, Duke, North Carolina. I mean, their guy, Leonard, can run. I mean, these, all these guys uh, are able to, to, you know, make plays with their feet. So it's something defenses, you know, have to be prepared for. Chris, you had a question, I think. Yeah, on the tackles. I mean, did you think in Salve's, he got some snaps at left tackle as well, right? I, think you, you played I don't remember if he did or not at left tackle, but, yeah, he's, yeah he can play left tackle. Yeah, Matt can play both. Uh, Matt will be the swing guy, if anything. Uh, Gabe would be right. Uh, we, you know, we wouldn't miss, you know, you know, Matt would definitely be our swing guy. After Virginia Tech, um, Jake Cradle said he felt like that was the most complete performance the offensive line had put together. Uh, would you assess it that way? You know, when you look at, you know, I think someone asked me a question about, like, uh, last week about Virginia Tech not being a very good run defense. Um, going into the week, I was like, you know, they were ranked 24th in rush defense. That was a stout uh, defense. And, you know, you just look at how we, you know, wore them out, okay? Because take the first three plays of the game, we didn't, you know, we went that way instead of that way, uh, getting awful field position. Uh, you're just trying to, you know, get out of the get out of the hole in the first series um, with, the, with the awful field position. Um, but, uh, you know, the offense line's done an unbelievable job. I can't tell you it's their best performance. I mean, everybody sees records broken. It's like, oh, that's our best. You know, I think there's been some, you know, there's, there's been some really good performances this year on the offensive line. You know, in the run game, um, uh, you know, they really have not let I me. Mean, I go back to Western Western uh, Michigan. That was a heck of a performance with you know, uh, 12 passes and all the junk they threw at us up front. I mean, so every week's a different challenge. I mean, you faced a physical, strong Virginia Tech front. Uh, last week, and then there's the, you know the other junk defenses people were throwing at you, and that's the mental part of it and the physical part at the same time. So I think it's a little bit of both, but you know, you know the run game t takes time, just like the passing game, you know, to get going. And sometimes you know you have to run it for a couple you know a couple yards or you know a couple TFLs, but you have to keep calling them and trust it. And that's what we haven't done in the past, and that's what we're getting to now. It's not like you know our kids went to go see the Wizard, you know, Wizard of Oz to get, you know, to, to get a run hard or whatever it may be. It was like, it was all in them. It's just, what do you get good at? And it is hard to get good at everything. You just, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, a lot of people are going to say, you know, you know, what runs are you going to do? I mean, anybody that has like 15 favorite runs and you're running outside zone, inside zone, counter, you know, they uh, usually aren't very good at it. But, you know, we're trying to select what we do, how we do it and uh, get good at something. And uh, you can't get good at too many runs, too many passes. Um, you just got to kind of keep it simple and do what you do and do what you do best. That goes back to Jerry's self-scout stuff. In your opinion, what makes Carter a good prospect for the next level? And when, when will he be able to start getting ready for that? You know, he's getting ready. He's going to start getting ready, you know, as of today. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's where his focus is going now. And, again, that decision was just made yesterday. Um, you know, we've, he's, been, he's been fighting. Um, what makes him a great prospect? Um, he's smart. He's he's got the measurables. He's long, got long arms, and you know, and he's athletic. I mean, what else? What else? You, what else is? He can pass protect. Last year, he showed he can pass protect when everybody in the stadium knows it's going to be a pass, and he's you know been able to run block this year. I wish he'd have got a couple more games in, but um, you know, unfortunately, that's not the case. How about a couple more? Anyone else? You get a chance to watch. Any college football Saturday? Oh, you kidding me? Everything. I watched everything. I mean, I got my iPad in front of me. Um, watched a lot of Louisville, um, but I watch every game I can. I'm I'm lucky. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Okay, I don't know how lucky you guys are, but I'm lucky because I've got four kids and a wife that love football. Even when I go home late last night, they got you know Sunday night football, and I don't even have to say, hey, can you change the channel? They already got it on. I mean, I'm. I am a fortunate. I mean, they are, you know, probably as addicted to, to watching ball as I am. So Sundays, you know, my oldest daughter's making all these fancy pizzas, and I mean, I, it's a, it's unbelievable. It's a good day, good day in the Narduzzi house.